Have you heard from Master Soul? Uh, no, but our team is radioed and we depart in 20. Are you joining us on the mission, Master? I am. D to the outer rim, it's just... You get nauseous when you travel through hyperspace? I don't get sick. I find it unsettling. Nah, the only unsettling thing is your acting. But who needs to be a good actor when you're slamming clam with a showrunner? Howdy all, I'm Adam the Renaissance Nerd, and welcome to my review of Acolyte, episode 6. Guess what? Nothing happened. 30 minutes of nothing. Little, I, I, I predicted it last week. Go back, look at the receipts. I said, I bet this week we're going to get a whole lot of sitting and talking, walking and talking, and nothing's going to happen. It's all word salad. It's all, the ho it's all hollow philosophy. And butchering. Here's the point. I'm not going to really rant and rave much this week. We're just going to show the inconsistencies of Disney Star Wars. The inconsistencies of their own writing. The misunderstanding of how everything works in the Star Wars universe by Leslie Headland and her band of merry morons. These people are just plain stupid. And <laughs> there's a couple moments we're going to show you where, wow, if the coincidence didn't happen, would have been a disaster. And they don't remember that things have to behave logically. That certain mechanisms in the Star Wars universe have to be applied for events and actions to happen. Oh, it's just a whole lot of dumb. And the acting, whoa, man. Amanda Stenberg has one expression. She literally does. It's been a meme for about a month now, but it really is true. She plays two different characters, and she has the same stupid, vacant look on her face the entire time. And don't get me started, oh, we will eventually, though, on Master Leslie Headland's wife. That woman, she is, she is a vacuum. She is a void of any sort of charisma. There is no acting ability in this woman at all. But hey, as I said in the opener, if you're slamming clam with the showrunner, you can do whatever you want, can't you? Anyway, all right, let's get started. We're going to try and make this one as quick as possible because guess what? As I said, nothing happened. As usual with Disney Star Wars, they're going to jump back and forth from one plot to another, and they're going to really screw up the idea of time. I know I constantly complain about how Disney Star Wars and everybody involved, all of them, every single show, every single movie, they have no concept of time, the passage of time, location, everything. It's just something, oh, it's, a, it's, it's like a video game to them. You just, things just happen in the video game. You walk from A to B in a couple of seconds. You fast travel all the time, and that's all that matters. They don't understand that time has to be a factor, especially when you're talking about people coming and going to the same place. What am I talking about? Here we are. We open on OSHA waking up. I'm going to use their real names because I have to make fun of them in a certain way today, so you're going to understand why. OSHA's waking up on some rando planet, which they actually call Unknown Planet. They actually have the re retardation say, Unknown Planet. Why don't you just not say anything? Because you could show a terrain and have us wondering, gee, I don't know where this place is. You don't have to say Unknown Planet. Completely retarded. She wakes up in a cave. Uh, she's been bandaged up from her wound. Uh, and now she's going to find some clothes and some boots because, of course... May's stuff is going to fit her perfectly because they're twins and they are exactly the same proportions even though they haven't seen each other in 16 years. Perfect. Perfect. No concept that perhaps, just perhaps, their diets, their physical exertions might have been different in the past 16 years and maybe one's a little more chunky than the other. All right. Leave that aside. She gets up, walks around, goes outside, and as I just mentioned, she's on some unknown planet on an island. There's a ship parked out there. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Now what? Well, she decides to just take a walk on the beach and look around. 
yeah, looking around, great. Unknown planet, going to wander, big deal, great. She's going to see good old Darth Zipperface, and she's going to follow him. Now, uh, <laughs> let's cut to Saul, good old master squid game. As you can see right here, he's first leaving the planet where Kilnaka had his spank shack. First leaving. We just watched him at the end of last episode. Him, May, and Basil got right on the ship. And as you can see, when you get close look up at him, he hasn't had time to clean up. He's still got battle damage. He's still all scruffy looking. He's going to immediately take off here. In a couple minutes, we're going to be back on Unknown Planet. And Darth Zipperface is going to say, Oh, well, a few hours have gone by. Isn't it nice that you're all a little healed up a little bit after a few hours? Okay, put a pin in that. We'll come right back to it. So, Master Squid Game, May and Basil lift off from the planet. And Master Squid Game can't get a transmission through to Coruscant, the Jedi Temple. Okay, great. He's supposed to do the right thing here. Get that message out that you just encountered the Sith. Oh, Conveniently, there's a communication problem. This is the horrible storytelling. Horrible storytelling. At least they could have had May assault him immediately and had a fight that damaged it. That would be more believable instead of just a convenient, oh, sorry, communication error. <laughs> because May is going to be walking around the ship hearing memories of when she took her, pat her Padawan youngling test and then... She's going to try and sneak up and gank Saul, who's going to go, Osha, I'm so glad you're here. And he's going to give her a hug. Great. Give her a hug. Glad you're alive. Everybody else is dead. That's fine. There's a problem with the communications array. I'm going to go reboot it. You take us into orbit. She goes, okay, fine. Now, you got to notice through all this time, man, that hair is conveniently covering the tattoo as opposed to every other goddamn time we saw M -M 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 May. You could see the tattoo no matter how her braids move. But conveniently now, the first visual cue that she is in Osha is just so neatly covered. Yeah. Love it. Uh, okay, now here's, um, here's the one compliment I'm going to give the episode. I know. I know. I can be objective when I need to. Master Squid Game resets the communicate, communications array, and he's going to have a moment, and he's going to have a, a breakdown moment where he's going to show his emotions. He's going to slam the counter, and he's going to... Uh, uh, uh. And guess what? Master Squid Game, great moment. Great moment. This, the, uh, he actually emotes. He's the only character that can emote in this show. Can't speak English worth a damn, but he's the only character that can emote, only guy. And you can see there it is. And properly, or maybe improperly, Revealing that he's not the greatest Jedi if his emotions have so much control, too much attachment, and it's gotten to him. It's too much. So he's going to have a bit, big mo moment about this, and great. You can relate to him a little bit. He just watched his entire team get wiped out, his, his previous Padawan, his current Padawan, and all he's got left is his washout Padawan. Great, or he thinks his washout Padawan. Great, fine, okay. Good moment. That's it. Rest is garbage going forward. Because meanwhile, you get a shot of retard Basil, who nobody, remember, nobody can understand him. Guy who thinks Anakin blew up the Death Star was the only one that could understand him verbally. So now he comes in holding the uh, part of Osha's vibrator with the flashlight attachment that she left behind because it smells like Osha and May doesn't smell like Osha, but now he needs to do something with it he's gonna wander off inside the ship as it hits and as it heads into orbit as he's wandering deeper into the ship he decides to take the vibrator with a flashlight attachment and recharge it because because apparently it just needs a recharge that's all and as he's looking through a bunch of crap in i guess a supply room he doesn't know what to do with it and so he takes the little lines on the vibrator and match it up with a sticker on the wall. It just so happens to be there to say, hey, if you have this particular specific little droid, you can plug it in right here. That's just, this is just lazy. It's childish story writing. 
This is ch- it's as if back in the day when I was a young lad, you had these picture books with the gold bindings on the side, and they were big with glorious, well illustrated art and easy for little kids to understand and see shit. That's what this is. This is the equivalent of gold bind books for morons. These people are idiots writing for idiots. And I guarantee every seal is clapping like this. Oh, oh yes, that's right, Basil. Put the sticker, put it where the sticker is. That's what you do, Basil. That's right, put the square through the, through the square hole. You can do it. Yay. That's what they're doing. That is exactly what they're doing. Oh my God, he's so smart. He put the circle through the circle hole. Writing is only as good as the people writing it and everybody involved with this show are retarded. Okay, let's go back to Unknown Planet where as I said, Osha is following Darth Zipperface and she follows him for a while until he decides to go take a bath. Oh wow, last week we had to suffer all the weirdo stands thirsting over this dude, so let's get him naked again and have them thirst even harder and call that character development. He's going to go swimming. She's going to pick up the lightsaber and threaten him. And now we're going to get a whole bunch of empty, hollow, faux philosophical dialogue about, You murdered my friends. I'm going to kill you. Oh, you have a good stance. You were horrible and used to be higher. You murdered everybody. Yes, I killed them all. Uh, but, But I hate you. Do you hate me? That's good. But why are you still calling yourself a Jedi? But it that that's essentially it. It's just they're having two different conversations and then just talking at each other as Darth Zipperface slyly wants to wants to convert her. And and as I mentioned a little bit ago, pulling the pin out now, he mentions they've been here for hours. So let's take a moment and understand the inconsistencies once again of time in Disney Star Wars. We just saw. Master Squid Game, take off from planet where Kilnaka had a spank shack go into, and go into orbit. You're telling me that in those couple of minutes, Darth Zipperface took Osha all the way back to wherever they stashed their ship on Kilnaka Spank Bank planet and then flew unnoticed from the planet Back to unknown planet, and it's been hours, but Master Squid Game is still there in orbit. Hasn't left up, had, was just going into orbit immediately after the events of the last episode. Wow. It's, it's just, you know, you could have not had all this inconsistency with time happen by doing one half of the show with Saul and his crap, and then the other half of the show on Unknown Planet. And then I wouldn't be making these questions happen. But guess what? Even if you had stuck with just Master Squid Game and Master Leslie Headland's wife, there would still be a major problem that we're gonna come back to later. A special relationship, isn't it? Master and people. And so the ever so obvious manipulation begins where Darth Zipperface will now start down the line of, hey, guess what? Master and apprentice, master pupil. It's such a interesting, intricate, intimate relationship. But guess what? Jedi can't ever really be intimate, can they? He's going to get deeper into that. Before that, though, uh, we go back to the ship, and all you got to know here is that suddenly there's another breakdown in the ship, which keeps Saul from sending another communication clearly all the way to Coruscant. He got a little bit of one out, but it didn't quite get everything through, so now he's going to send May to fix it. <laughs> Leading up to one of the most ridiculous ridiculous scenes I've ever seen even in Disney Star Wars because May is going to go into the ship she's going to go into the ship and she's going to find where Basil has left the vibrator with the flashlight attachment charging at least I think it is the room doesn't look the same maybe because it's the lights are out I don't know she goes in there she takes she's about to get it but then there's Basil there's Basil he's all at her because guess what he knows it's may not osha because he can smell her 
So he charges her, and you have a comical fight where he's humping her leg to attack her. Literally, humping her leg to attack her, and she's going, oh, hey, what you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then he stomps on her foot, and she is in so much pain, he runs away free. And as she goes to get the vibrator from its charging station, it squirts her in the face. Now, I'll give Amanda Stenberg some credit here, because that's a, that is a true surprise face, but be, she listen. She's a non-binary they them who likes to slam clam. She's never made that face in her life. Anyway, uh, so she's gonna take the vibrator with the flashlight attachment, and it doesn't want to work with her because it knows it, the droid knows a droid magically knows it's not OSHA and it's m m m May. So what does she do? I'm all right. I, I have this right here. Let's see. She, she takes this. This is the droid. She takes it, and she goes, mm, mm, I'm going to reset you to factory settings. Mm. That's what she does. She holds down a button, and boom, that just resets it <laughs> because she magically knows how to reset it. And also, it's just it's a really silly moment because now the droid will obey her. It'll do exactly what she wants, scan for problems with the ship, and magically, conveniently, she finds a fresh base for it, even though its original base was left on the planet. They just happened to have a base unit for the vibrator to attach to. Great. She's going to go about fixing the ship, I guess. On Coruscant, we now discover that Master Leslie Headland's wife, after having a little bit of a political conversation, is informed by a sort of gay Jedi that there was a problem with Master Saul's expedition force. We got a garbled message. There was a disaster. It looks like people are dead. Well, what does Master Leslie Headland's wife, with her horrible acting, decide to do? Her zero charisma on screen, her zero ability to emote either facially or tonally? I'm going to go check it out myself and not inform the High Council. I'm going to go do it because it's my fault I sent them. So let's see. Instead of letting her superiors know because she's not on the High Council, she's on, as people have referred to, the Middle Management Council, She's going to just put together a quick little team and go there herself to find out what happened. Wow. It look, looks like the secondary option of the whole uh, lore-breaking stuff. It looks like they're going that route. No Key Mundi around, so it looks as though it's going to be a situation of everybody who's involved in this is likely just going to die. If that's how you're going to get at it, fine. Maybe you shouldn't have started all in the first place to have, have, to have to have some ridiculous outcome like this. So she's going to head off, and now let's go right back to the unknown planet. Anger, fear, loss, desire. That's the path to the dark side. Semantics. On the unknown planet, Darth Zipperface really begins his full manipulation of Osha by informing her that he was once a Padawan youngling a long time ago. How long ago? A really long time ago. Dude can't be more than 29, 30. She's in her early 20s. That, the whole idea that he was there long before she was and somehow got abandoned by a master, it's ridiculous. Because uh, at some point, I forgot to mention this, sorry. You see when he was all naked in the bath, he's got some scars on his back, which is supposed to now lead us to believe that his master betrayed him and scarred him. <sighs> anyway, so now we get this thing. As I said, it's, I was once a Padawan like you. You can't really trust him because think about it like this. You, you give so much to them. You give so much to the Jedi, and they can never give anything back. It's not a it's not a solid relationship. Why do you insist that you're a Jedi? Uh, and he, he continues because he draws it out, playing with her mind. They end up back at the cave where he's making some food, and here is a problem again. Now I mentioned earlier they do not understand. Leslie Headland does not understand how the Force 
works because he was she was trying to go on and on about uh the jedi are strong force are powerful this or this why are you why do you have me here what do you hope to get from me i don't have any strength and he goes no you do have strength you are you have the force with you the jedi are wrong in how they teach you how the force works because if you're a jedi according to their teachings if you don't use the force you lose your ability to contact and wield it no if you're force sensitive, you're force sensitive forever. As I explained in an earlier review, the one time you had a Jedi lose contact with the force in real Star Wars lore is when the exile, uh, Mitra Surik in KOTOR 2, she shut herself off from the force because of the pain of, of the Mandalorian Wars. She couldn't take it. She couldn't take it. She shut herself off, and she had to relearn how to use it through her attachment to Kreia. Just saying, I'm not going to practice anymore, doesn't make you dead to the Force. It doesn't change anything. It's not how it works. Because then it gets even worse. He's going to say to her, as you saw in the clip, there are other paths. There are other paths. Anger, fear. <sighs> he didn't say, he say aggression. He said something else. And May goes, that's the dark side of the force. And then he looks at her and says, semantics. Oh, ho, ho, they went and did it. Leslie Headland, with the permission of Dave Filoni, went ahead and said, there is no light or dark side. It's just the force. And it's how you perceive it and use it. And no, this is not just a Sith manipulation. This is what they think. This is how they believe the Force works. They're pushing gray Jedi bullshit. There is no good. There is no evil. There's only the Force and how you perceive it. So for him to say semantics, that is, that's letting the truth out. That, that's how they perceive the Force in Disney Star Wars. There is no light or dark side. It's just however you perceive it, you can do what you want. <laughs> Stupid. And now leads to a confrontation between... Osha and Darth Zipperface, where she keeps pushing him and pushing him. Why you're doing this to me, this and that. He keeps trying to manipulate her, saying, why do you keep calling yourself a Jedi? Why don't you just kill me? Just do it. Because your Jedi code tells you not to, but you're not a Jedi. And then they're going to fight, and he keeps twisting. Well, she wants to fight, excuse me. He keeps twisting her by saying, why do you want to be like them so much? Your master squid game. He could never give you the attachment. You were having... they." They they slip it in. They don't quite say it, but they now go. They 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 dance around the fact that she wanted to scissor me timbers with Jeki. They wanted to scissor me timbers. Like why you would have had the same thing you would have had with Master Squid Game. You would never have received all the love back that you're giving them. So why are you this? Why are you that? Why didn't you leave the Jedi? The, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm get, I'm gobbling up. So I'm trying to make fun of you. Gotta understand. He's pushing her, pushing her to the point where she says. Uh, I I I couldn't be a Jedi because I failed. And then she ignites the lightsaber and tries to kill him. And he says, good, good. Now you're understanding because now the manipulation is taking hold. You have to understand you're like me. When I was abandoned and lost everything, that's when I was free. Why don't you just use the Sith code and get to my chains are broken, I am free instead of dancing around using it? Because you know what? They probably didn't look up the whole entire Sith code. There's that first part that we mentioned earlier, a couple of reviews earlier in like episode two when he was babbling at her. <sighs> now the manipulation has begun. And she's buying into it because she de, de the lightsaber. He says, good, now you're listening to me. She says, I don't trust you. Good, you don't have to trust me. Oh, no, she says that later. Sorry. She says that later. We'll get back to that in a second. Because now it's back to the ship. Back on the ship. Master Squid Game and May are having a conversation, a little sit down where he's having a continued meltdown about what happens. And she starts pushing him. W what happened on my home planet where the witches were lesbians? What happened there? Oh, I I I'm tired of living a lie. He says, I'm going to go to the council. I'm going to turn everything over. You need to know the truth. I'm going to tell you everything. But before their really poorly choreographed with broken English dialogue can continue, the ship power comes back on, and she rushes off to send the communication. And now 
I, I don't know how to explain this, but I guess Saul figured it out during this period of time that it wasn't OSHA, but May, because he stuns her. Let's, let's, let's take a moment and remember what happened last episode when OSHA stunned May. May shook it off in 30 seconds. But now she drops like a lump of flesh to the floor. And she's out cold. And there you go. Saul figured it out. How? Well, there are many ways he could have. He could have sensed that her force attunement was different. That her feelings were betraying her. But they're kind of alluding to the fact that Basil told him. Basil. Who nobody could understand. Except guy who, blew, guy who thinks Anakin blew up the Death Star. And he's dead. <laughs> Fine. I'm all for uh, logical logical things happening, but there's no logic to this because there was no indication that Master Squid Game knew that May was pretending to be Osha because they strategically had that hair over the tattoo the entire time. Never budged, no matter what she did. It's like though it was glued there with hairspray. Anyway, now here comes, so they have that inconsistency with stun devices, with a stun gun in this show. It either lasts 30 seconds or lasts for a long time. Now, here is another really stupid-ass thing. While we were waiting for all this to happen, I forgot to mention, well, you saw it in my very opening clip, so I don't need to really tell you. Master Leslie Headland's wife and her team were heading here. They were heading here uh, under a very stupid comical thing about master you're going to the outer rim they're going to the outer rim don't you hate hyperspace travel doesn't it make you nauseous oh no it doesn't i just get unsettled by it i this is some sort of jangly key member berry for people who read the high republic all five of them that read the high republic everybody else just going wow this is pretty dumb anyway so they left literally minutes ago minutes ago who knows it, doesn't matter it couldn't have been more than half an hour and now we've got master squid game has decided to not contact the high council he was receiving a transmission turns it off doesn't input anything for hyperspace travel into the nava computer remember that's an essential thing we learned way back in a new hope unless you put in the proper numbers to the nava computer to the hyperspace nava computer you could Bounce too close to a supernova. Remember that line? Because here, doesn't do anything, just flips the switch. Just pulls the lever, ship goes into hyperspace. And as it leaves, here's the literal scene. His ship leaves, and here comes Master Leslie Headland's wife's ship, exactly where he was. So apparently, if he hadn't left in that exact moment, her ship would have crashed right into his. Because they are literally occupying the same space. Wow. Let's forget the rules of everything, shall we? And coincidentally, one leaves, the other arrives. So once more, we have fast travel. Instantaneous. They literally just left the scene before. And they have just been hanging out in orbit over Spank Shack Forest Planet for maybe half an hour to an hour. We have no idea how long maybe the, the, the repairs took to the ship. But they left and they arrived. It's all ridiculous and stupid. And they don't get anything. They're just happy to break the rules in order to have an interesting scene of one ship leaving and another ship coming. Master Leslie Headland's wife and her crew go down to the planet where they learn that a bunch of bugs have just been born and that could have led to the death of everybody. So they're going to just, they're going to instantaneously walk into the forest and reach the war zone around Kelnaka Spank Shack. During this point, there's going to be more Osha and Darth Zipperface as he's fixing his helmet where he'll reveal that it's Cortosis. When they could have, they should have done that last episode. And not only is Cortosis, not only is Cortosis a handy tool against lightsabers, it also provides sensory deprivation. Okay, sure, whatever. Let's just add that in there. And when he puts the helmet on, it blocks out everything except him and the Force. And she says, wait, 
it, it, so you you can't see or hear anything. It's I hear things, and he, you could there's like a slit crack. You'll see it later. It sees barely anything, but you have only what you take with you. Somebody watched a Yoda clip. <laughs> And now begins the more manipulation of why don't you try it on? Why don't you understand where to, what it feels like to only have your own power without anything else influencing you? More influence. And she says, here's what she says. I don't trust you. She says, you shouldn't. And that's why you're learning. Trust yourself. Trust your instincts. Blah, blah, blah. The manipulation is dumb. Back on Kelnaka Spank Shack area, they discover all the dead bodies. And I just went like this. Yeah! when we see dead Jackie. Yay, when we see dead Yord. And I, I know why I'm glad because I know every single goddamn stand is going, no, no, why do you show me their dead bodies? You're so cruel, Leslie Hedlin, but you're so awesome at the same time for showing that there's consequences. They think this is consequences. They really do. The fact that we all knew all these characters had to die in order for them to even remotely have this show make sense. So they have this whole thing where they're inspecting the battle and realizing it was a, a battle between lightsabers. And then one of the moths tries to attack them. Remember the buildup that you were going to see Leslie Headland's wife wield the lightsaber whip? Well, guess what? Everything you saw in the clip from the trailer, that's it. The moth tries to attack them and she just goes whoop and kills it. That's it. That's the big lightsaber whip. And I've already seen it. The stands are wetting themselves on it. Oh my God, I saw the light whip. Once again, let's remember, a lightsaber whip makes no sense. Without a physical attachment like Lumia had for her light whip, a lightsaber whip has no mass to whip it around. It is a bit of physics and technology that doesn't work. I mean, that gay ass... Uh, I guess he's a Jedi. I don't think he's a Padawan because his braid is over here and not here. That gay-ass Jedi, he should have been sliced in half because there's no way she's controlling that whip like that. None whatsoever. Well, gay Jedi is going to accuse Master Squid Game of murdering everybody, but she says that's a, that's a bold accusation, which doesn't make sense if he was the one trying to let us all know what happened. So I guess we're going to get more of it later because that's it for them. Uh, back for two seconds, back on the... Back on Master Squid Game ship, Osha comes, sorry, May comes too. And now we just, she's bound and she's locked in her chair. She's locked on the table. And now Master Squid Game's basically going to say, I've been, I've been wondering for years what I would say to you if I ever could apologize for what happened back on Lesbian Coven Planet. And now you're going to sit here and I'm going to tell you what happened, setting up likely the flashback episode number two ne next time. So that's all that's worth. It's just a lot of broken English, bad dialogue, bad exchange. A man with Stenberg can't act or moat, and Basil standing there jerking off in a corner. Final scene. We're back in the cave. Osha picks up the helmet, decides to put it on, and she'll be breathing inside it like Darth Vader. And then you'll see her looking through the slit that you can barely see anything through. And then close your eyes and episode over. We're done. We're done. We're done with a tease that, oh my God, she's a, she's becoming a Sith. She's being manipulated. And oh my God, isn't it like Vader breathing through the mask? Ah. Dizzy Star Wars, everybody. Inconsistency, lazy writing, and just plain boring. What more can I say that I haven't already said? Inconsistencies left and right. They can't keep track of time. They can't keep track of their technology. They can't even understand how hyperspace travel works. You need a Nava computer to put in the coordinates. You can't just have one ship leave and the other one suddenly arrive exactly where it was. If it had arrived one second sooner, they would have crashed into each other. But a Nava computer wouldn't have allowed a ship to come into orbit like that. But they don't get any of that. You've got loads of terrible acting, hollow Jedi Sith philosophy being thrown out by Darth Zipperface as he blatantly manipulates Osha, who's a goddamn retard. 
and is easily pulled around by anybody who's in front of her. May is just there's there's no there's no consistency to anything May. She tries to kill Master Squid Game but then goes along with it and then for some reason rushes to send out a communication leaving her open to be stunned when he figured out it was May not Osha but how did he do it? We don't know. And then he's going to be all so- sobbing and weeping I'm going to tell you everything. Great. Okay, fine. We have Master Leslie Headland's wife who can't act. Their whole thing is just, let's just fill time. Let's fill time and lay the groundwork for something else retarded to probably happen. All all along filled with horrible dialogue, horrible writing. Nobody makes any sense with their real motivations on why they do stuff. May only, I mean, sorry, Osha only wants to try and kill Darth Zipperface because she's angry that she failed the Jedi, and now he's trying to tell her they failed her, and he, she can never scissor me timbers with, with any of them because it would never work because they can't get a test. It's, this show is simply going farther and farther off the rails. They already said we're going to break the rules of the Force. It's semantics, light, dark. We're, we're going to show you now. We're, going to, we're, in, we're in the home stretch here. Two episodes ago, we're going to show you how bad the Jedi are. We're going to show you that it's all a certain point of view on how you how you perceive the world and react to things, and you're justified, your truth, and how you do stuff. I think we're finally done with all the gay shit. I don't think there's any more room for gay shit because just about everybody's dead, and they can't really push that crap. But it's not doesn't mean it's not going to be bad. Doesn't mean it's not going to be bad. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be boring. And I'll be back next week with episode seven. If you guys had a good time, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Enjoy everything else I have to offer. And I will see you next week. Until then, take it easy. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Check out my gaming channel at Renaissance Nerd Arcade. And follow me on X Twitter under at the Red Nerd. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.